Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be answering a very simple question. What would actually happen if two neutron stars collided with each other relatively close to our solar system? In other words, would we actually be affected at all? Let's find out, and welcome to What The Math. So I decided to place these two neutron stars right here, relatively close to our solar system, but this is very, very unrealistic. As a matter of fact, no neutron star or no pulsar is that close to our sun. The closest ones we found are over 400 light years away from us, and I'm gonna show you how far away it is in a few seconds. But basically, nothing is really that close, but for this simulation, we're going to assume that maybe, just maybe, there is something that close. And I guess the main question I wanted to answer in this video is, so how far away or how close do two neutron stars have to be to our solar system for them to possibly cause a major extinction event on the surface of our planet? So let's actually speculate a little bit and use a little bit of science to answer these questions. But first of all, let's maybe accelerate time and watch those two neutron stars that we've created collide and basically create a supernova or in this case actually a kilonova uh, very close to our own earth i'm going to accelerate time just so you can start seeing it it's going to start popping out any second now because this is actually a very very close event that would probably never happen you can kind of see it appearing right there now we know today that uh for our Earth to experience a major extinction event, a supernova, so not a kilonova, but a supernova would have to occur somewhere within about 50 light years away from our planet Earth. If it's anything farther away than that, we'll probably not experience much. Now, in this case, a kilonova is a much more powerful event. It's actually an event that's many, many, many times more energetic, but it mostly releases... Uh, oh, wow, look at that. It mostly releases actual matter, not really as much energy as, as a supernova. In other words, it, yes, it does produce X-rays and gamma rays, and a lot of gamma rays, but those gamma rays are not as bright and not as energetic as they would be from a supernova, but it does produce a huge amount of um, actual matter though, which is what makes it very, very energetic. In this case, because this event happened so close to us, our planet Earth has now been basically completely eliminated. But let's actually make this a little bit more realistic and um, please, well, first of all, let me show you how far away 50 light years away is uh, from us. We're going to use the simulation code nearest 100 stars. And here the sun is in the middle. Alpha Centauri is at a distance of about four light years away. This is the closest star system to us. And if I were to zoom out here and place one of the pulsars we have at a distance of 50 light years, that would be somewhere around here. So this, is how far away a, a supernova has to be for us to actually experience an extinction event. So something that you just saw, maybe a little bit less dramatic though. But here's the thing though, we don't really see, or we haven't found any neutron stars that close. The closest ones, and actually there's seven that we found that were very well known, they're actually known as the Magnificent, uh, Magnificent Seven. Uh, they are, at a distance of about 400 light years. So that would be quite dramatically farther. As a matter of fact, it's about eight times as far away as the one that you just saw. So it's around here. So the closest neutron stars to, to us are around here. Uh, they don't really have any cool names yet. As a matter of fact, all of them are known as, with funny names like, for example, PSR J01081431, which is, I believe, the closest one. Uh, it's at a distance of about 424 light years. Uh, and only one of them actually does have a cool name. As a matter of fact, named after the evil character from the movie The Magnificent, uh, Magnificent Seven. It, um, it's actually called 
Calvera, which uh, is the name of that character that was in the movie. But even that object is very far away. It's close to about 1,000 light years away from us. So these neutron stars are pretty far. And the other thing is that all of the ones we found so far, at least in our galaxy, are actually singular neutron stars. As a matter of fact, we think that only about 5% of all neutron stars become binary, which means that the only way for us to experience a kilonova or a collision that we uh, saw or detected uh, back in 2017 when two neutron stars in another galaxy collided. So such event with two binary neutron stars would actually very, very unlikely to happen in our own galaxy because we haven't even found any binary neutron stars yet. They might exist somewhere far away in our galaxy, possibly even on the other side of the galaxy. But um, even in that case, a collision between them would be super rare, and um, it's probably something that happens only once per 10,000 years. So to experience a kilonova, basically to experience something that would be like this, and you can actually even barely see it from this distance. So to experience something that is um, a kilonova, in our galaxy it would take us thousands and thousands of years of waiting. And so to experience this in our own galaxy would actually take us thousands and thousands of years of waiting. And for this event to be actually close enough to our own solar system for it to be dangerous would actually take possibly billions of years of waiting because this means that those two neutron stars would have to come relatively close to our sun, stay alive for that long, and then collide pretty close to us. So all of these things, when you take them into consideration, are very, very unlikely to happen. But assuming that they do happen, uh, this is actually what would occur in comparison to, let's actually say, a uh, supernova. So I'm going to place Earth right here. It's going to orbit around the sun and it's going to hopefully not disappear. And let's just quickly talk about what would happen to Earth if such an event occurred. And so first of all, um, unlike the supernova, the actual uh, radiation from from the kilonova which are actually maybe I should create there just so you can see it and so unlike a supernova which actually this is a kilonova that would occur from a collision of two neutron stars would actually begin as a very large burst of gamma rays well I guess similar to supernova but possibly not as powerful and even though it's basically incredibly energetic photons um, those photons, when they hit the atmosphere of our planet Earth, they maybe uh, they might be able to remove some of the ozone layer and possibly remove some of the upper atmosphere. In other words, maybe just maybe some of the cloud layer and some of the atmosphere might actually get stripped just a little bit, but not by dramatic event, unless it happens within about. 10 light years away from us, it actually is not going to cause too much. And because this event will happen relatively quick, only one side of the planet will be affected. The other side will actually be just fine. Now, after this gamma ray flash, uh, we're actually going to experience a very, very bright, white visible flash that will probably turn the entire planet super bright for quite a long time. Now, this bright flash is not going to be super dangerous, but it will create an unusual effect on the planet. And this bright flash will probably last for a few days. Although I think in this case, something happened to our planet again and it's getting ridiculously hot. I think this uh, supernova was a little bit too close. So the white flash that we'll see We'll probably warm up our planet just a little bit, but not dramatically so. And after this, the remainder of the time, we'll basically be waiting for the wave of those radioactive materials to arrive to our planet. And for the most part, by the time they actually get to our planet from as far away as 50 light years, there's not really going to be that many. As a matter of fact, um, about 20 million years ago, there was a supernova relatively close to um, our solar system. And uh, we think it may have caused, um, potentially caused, one of the ice ages on our planet Earth because the radioactive iron, when it got to our planet, influenced the climate. And uh, we think that maybe, just maybe, those radioactive particles from a kilonova 
might potentially cause some sort of a climatic change on our planet, it's actually not going to be dramatic. As a matter of fact, a supernova would probably cause a slightly, uh, or actually not slightly, but a dramatically more different effect on our planet because it just kind of is a lot more energetic in terms of the actual um, photons and the particles that arrive to our planet Earth are just not going to be as uh, effective at causing any serious change on our planet. So this would probably not happen unless this was a supernova. And so in other words, just to kind of summarize, well, first of all, uh, it's very unlikely that any serious catastrophic neutron star collision is going to happen anywhere near us. So you're not going to see anything that looks like this in the next few hundred million years for sure. A supernova might occur, but a binary star, binary neutron star collision is not going to happen for a very, very long time. And even if it does happen um, within about 50 light years away from us, it's probably just going to strip the ozone layer, cause the planet to be bright for a few days and uh, bombard us with quite a lot of radioactive particles within the next uh, hundred or so years. But ad after that, or I guess really except for that, there is not going to be any dramatic change and massive extinction is probably not going to occur. So a supernova is actually a lot more dangerous in that sense and is more likely to cause a serious extinction event than a kilonova. A kilonova, as a matter of fact, is a lot more important for the development of life, of course, because it creates a lot of these other particles and a lot of these other elements that didn't exist before. So everything after iron, including, of course, gold and platinum, is actually formed during the neutron star collision during a kilonova. So you have nothing to worry about. And you may go and sleep well because there is not going to be any extinction event from two neutron star colli colliding anytime soon. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. That's all I wanted to talk about in this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye. Now, on the other hand, if a supernova did occur, it might actually create some serious trouble on us, on the surface of our planet. And possibly even completely eliminate it. That would be a completely different story though. And I've already talked about this in one of the previous videos that you can check out on this channel. Space out guys, bye bye.